16-inch MacBook Pro review. Please take 3 seconds to click the subscribe button on our channel for more upcoming videos. The best MacBook Pro ever. The MacBook Pro 16-inch is a refinement from Apple done just right. With a careful focus on consumer wants, it brings a revamp to all aspects ranging from display size, keyboard and battery life without swaying from the core MacBook design. As a portable workstation, it offers great performance on all fronts and is enough to tempt even hardcore Windows users to make the switch. Currently, it is one of the best laptops you can buy as long as you have the budget for it. I'm typing this 16-inch MacBook Pro review using its new Magic Keyboard and I don't want to give it up. In fact, this keyboard is a revelation compared to Apple's highly criticized butterfly keyboards. There's more travel, a cushier feel. It just feels right. The bad news. The MacBook Pro 16-inch 2019 starts at $2,399, and my review unit costs $2,799. To be fair, this laptop is for serious creative pros with more demanding needs, like coders, video editors and game developers. That's why it has up to an 8-core Core i9 processor, up to 64GB of RAM and up to 8TB of storage. You also get a huge 16-inch retina display with slimmer bezels and a crazy powerful 6-speaker audio system. I'd like to see more ports and a true 4K screen, but overall the 16-inch MacBook Pro is an absolute beast for power users and one of the best laptops you can buy. Before we get into the mechanics, let's talk about the feel of this magic keyboard, which takes inspiration from Apple's beloved desktop keyboards. The keys have a much softer feel than the last several MacBook Pros along with more travel. I didn't feel any fatigue as I typed this review, composed emails or responded to Slack messages. The screen is marginally bigger at 16 inch on the diagonal rather than 15.4 inch, although you can only really tell side by side. The display has a higher resolution, which provides slightly more screen real estate in use, as well as being slightly crisper on paper with a density of 226 pixels per inch, up from 220 ppi. On the whole it's one of the nicest displays I've used on a laptop. Rich, bright, easy to use in most lighting conditions, it is individually calibrated at the factory and it has a mode that simulates high dynamic range. But it is not a true HDR display nor is it 4K, which may be an issue for those looking to work with content in both although most will likely transition to a dedicated edit suite for serious work. The MacBook Pro does support output to up to two 6K or four 4K displays simultaneously, for those who use this as the sole machine working at a desk. Given that the 16-inch MacBook Pro 2019 was explicitly designed to edit 4K video, in fact, it can handle up to 11 4K streams simultaneously, I'm bummed that this panel doesn't have 4K resolution. You get a resolution of 3072 by 1920 MacBook Pro, compared to 2880 by 1800 for the 15-inch MacBook Pro. That's a difference between 226 ppi for the new MacBook Pro and 220 ppi for its predecessor. The slimmer borders makes content pop more, whether you're editing video or binge-watching shows. When watching a trailer for The Mandalorian, I could make out the fine vents on the dirtied Stormtrooper helmets mounted on spikes. True pros will appreciate the ability to change the refresh rate on the display. This is important for editors who want the refresh rate to match the frame rate of their content. Based on our lab testing, the 16-inch MacBook Pro screen can reproduce 113.9% of the sRGB color gamut, which is good. However, the OLED and non-OLED version of the XPS 15 scored 239% and 210%, respectively. The OLED version of the HP NVX 360 reached 258%. The panel on the 16-inch MacBook Pro 2019 is one of the most accurate around, as it turned in a Delta E score of 0.27. A score of 0 is perfect. In terms of brightness, the 16-inch MacBook Pro's display registered 429 nits, which is very bright but below Apple's 500 nit rating. The OLED panel on the Dell XPS 15 reached a much higher 626 nits, and the non-OLED 4K model hit 418 nits, which is just below the MacBook Pro. This doesn't seem very pro to me. You get four Thunderbolt 3 ports with USB-C connections with the 16-inch MacBook Pro. That's nice, but I wish Apple found a way to squeeze in a micro SD card or SD card slot for photographers, as well as a full-size USB port. If you have full-size USB cables for other peripherals, you'll have to keep living that dongle life. 
For the longest time, the butterfly keyboard on the MacBook Pro had problems. User complained about unresponsive keys when dust found its way into them. Thankfully, the MacBook Pro 16-inch uses a scissor switch mechanism found on Apple's Magic Keyboard. Keys still have a decent 1mm travel and the machine is also able to maintain its slim profile. As for typing, the impact is instant. The keyboard is a joy to type on, offering a responsive and satisfying experience. Once you are used to this new mechanism, moving back to the older 15-inch MacBook Pro's keyboard is painful, with the experience feeling fat. Other changes to the keyboard have also been made, focusing specifically on the touch bar, which is now shorter. On its left, you now find a physical escape key which is a welcome change for people with coding backgrounds while on its right, you find the slightly shifted Touch ID button which can be used to make payments using Apple Pay. This further doubles as the machine's power button too. On the bottom right of the keyboard, the arrow keys too are now back to the classic, inverted T, layout. This just makes operation feel more natural and again, it has been a long requested feature. Right underneath the keyboard, you find a huge trackpad. At first, it seemed obnoxiously large but having used it, there is quite a bit of functionality to it. Clicking and pressing feels extremely natural just like Mac OS Catalina's gestures. There is a slight learning curve associated with the trackpad but once you get the hang of it, it is hard to go back. Other laptop makers need to go back to the drawing board. The six-speaker sound system on the 16-inch MacBook Pro has the best sound I've ever heard on a laptop. This system offers beefier bass that's half an octave deeper, thanks to force-canceling woofers that also minimize vibrations even when you max out the volume. When I played 311's Beautiful Disaster with my wife in another room, she didn't believe me that the audio was coming from a laptop. In fact, the sound is much richer and fuller than the first-gen Echo Show that sits in our kitchen. I got a similar reaction when playing the Mandalorian trailer from in our office, as I heard several people say, wow. Podcasters and musicians will definitely appreciate the 16-inch MacBook Pro studio quality, 3 mic array. Apple says there's 40% less hiss. Personally, I just want to be able to attend Google video calls without having to wear a dorky headset, and this system would let me do that. To try out the mics, I conducted a live video interview on Cheddar without donning a headset, which is usually a big no-no for any sort of broadcast. And yet my voice came through loud and clear during the segment. Apple gives you a rich choice when it comes to choosing the 16-inch MacBook Pro specifications. Albeit at a steep cost, you can configure it with up to 8TB of SSD storage and 64GB of RAM, making it the most powerful laptop available on the market. The version we received for review though was its high-end base configuration which comes with a 2.3GHz 8-core Intel Core i9 processor, AMD Radeon Pro 5500M, 16GB RAM and 1TB SSD for someone who extensively edits video, this configuration is perfect but perhaps, upgrading to 32GB of RAM and 8GB of dedicated graphics memory over this variant's 4GB could be worth it in the long run. Day-to-day -day usage is far from an issue on the 16-inch MacBook Pro. It does not suffer from stutters or hangs and the general usage experience is fluid. Apple's Mac OS in general is quite responsive even with a lot of applications open which is great for hardcore multitaskers. Putting this into perspective, the laptop was able to score 3,312 on Cinebench, where in comparison, Apple's iMac Pro scores 3,720. We tested the MacBook Pro 16-inch with benchmarks in areas such as file transfer, rendering, video editing. With file transfer, we tested how quick the MacBook was able to handle both an 8GB and 26GB file transfer from a high-end smartphone for which times translated to 335 and 1721 respectively. Official read and write speeds for the device were also tested at 2,439 megabytes per second and 3,034 megabytes per second using Blackmagic disk speed test. The only instance where the MacBook took a long time to load something was reading large files from smartphones which is much slower compared to a Windows equivalent. While people invested in the Apple ecosystem may not struggle with this too much, it is significant to point out especially for those who may be interested in a MacBook but may own non-Apple hardware for the most part. The bulk of the strenuous testing was done both with rendering video clips and animations on the MacBook. We loaded identical 4K resolution 5-minute projects on both FCPX and Adobe Premiere Pro CC and rendered them with similar presets which gave us a time of 2.44 and 5 o'clock respectively, with background rendering on FCPX turned off. 
we then rendered the same projects with no change in settings, on a base iMac Pro with a 3.2 GHz 8-core Intel Xeon W processor, 32 GB 2666 MHz ECC memory and a Radeon Pro Vega 56 with 8 GB HBM2 memory giving us a time of 310 and 544 for FCPX and Adobe Premiere Pro CC respectively. Quite interestingly, the MacBook Pro 16-inch comprehensively beats out the iMac Pro in these instances, presumably because of the laptop having a higher turbo boost speed of 4.8 GHz compared to 4.2 GHz on the iMac Pro. Similarly for 3D animation, we rendered a 4K 60fps animation on Blender at its default settings in Eevee at 64 samples to push the MacBook 16-inch to its maximum potential. Here, we saw a time of 14.15 from the MacBook Pro 16-inch. The same test, when run on the iMac Pro was considerably faster at 8.53. Despite rendering files and profusely editing with the machine, both its thermals and noise levels stayed well in control. There was no evidence of thermal throttling and especially when it comes to controlling noise, Apple has done a phenomenal job. The machine stays amazingly quiet even under heavy load, and you need to get fairly close to it to hear its fan. The biggest laptop you can legally include in a laptop is 100 watt hours. And that's exactly what you get with the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Apple says you should expect up to 11 hours of web surfing time, which would be pretty impressive for a 16-inch laptop. On our battery test, which involves continuous web surfing at 150 nits of screen brightness, the 16-inch MacBook Pro endured 10 hours and 55 minutes. That's excellent battery life for a big screen laptop and outlasts competing Windows systems. The non-OLED, 4K version of the Dell XPS 13 lasted 8 hours and 48 minutes, and the OLED version lasted 8.07, so we're talking about at least a 2-hour difference. The OLED version of the Spectre X360 15 lasted a meager 7 hours and 46 minutes, and the non-OLED Spectre X360 lasted 8.09. Unfortunately, Apple doesn't make any claims about fast charging. The 16-inch MacBook Pro's power brick is pretty beefy, though, as it's a 96W USB-C power adapter in the same size as the 15-inch MacBook Pro's 87W adapter. If you were looking for a new Mac laptop as a workstation, but were put off buying one because of the troubles with the keyboard, or that it just didn't last long enough to get whatever you needed to done in the field, the 16-inch MacBook Pro is the answer. Aside from the new keyboard, it's clear Apple has listened to at least a few requests from power users. The escape key is backed by popular demand, as is the T-shaped layout of the arrow keys, while a separated power touch ID button is much more user-friendly. You can even fix some things without fully dismantling the machine, which is a step forward. There's still no SD card slot or any port option not USB-C but by now most will have hubs, dongles or new replacement cables for the necessary things. The 16-inch MacBook Pro is most certainly not the laptop for general users who just want a big screen, the price alone should be able to tell you that. But if you know you need this sort of capability, then the MacBook Pro is in a similar price bracket to competitors and can be specified with a frankly absurd amount of capacity, which might make the difference. The first of the fifth-generation MacBook Pros is a return to form for Apple, and bodes well for further refreshes of the company's slightly more affordable laptop lines expected in the near future. Thanks for watching, please subscribe for more upcoming videos.